안녕하세요. 매일매일 운동하기를 실천하고 있는 동탄 왕코입니다. 오늘은 쉬는 날이에요. 어제도 쉬는 날이고 오늘도 쉬는 날이고 내일 오후 출근이지만 어제는 야간 끝나고 오후에 잠을 잤다가 한 4시간 깼다가 또 잤어요. 그래서 오늘 10시까지인가 또 잤습니다. 잠을 몇 시간을 잔 거야? 열... 18시간 정도 잠을 잤습니다. <웃음> 어떻게 이렇게 자냐고 하지만 자집니다. 자져요. 연속으로 잔건 아니지만 어쨌든 18시간 잤어요. 하... 이제 운동을 할게요. 점심을 먹고 와 영화 클래식을 봤는데 진짜 영화 클래식은 최고입니다 진짜 볼 때마다 너무 재밌어요 특히 노래가 저는 노래가 너무 마음에 들어요 영화 내내 나오는 그 노래가 다 진짜 다 우리나라 가요라고 해야 되나요 아무튼 그 음악들이 계속 나온단 말이에요 근데 그게 진짜 너무 좋아요 그래서 지금 넷플릭스에서 1위 하고 있는 영화 살아있다 진짜 국내에서도 1위라는 게나 너무 어이가 없어 진짜 보다 뻗어 보다 뻗어 진짜 나 운동해야지 아뭔 말을 합니까 또. 아 운동할 때 CNN. Once the world is ready, until we meet again. Amazing Thailand. Amazing Thailand. Aging society comes with digital division. Japan with the world. Vigorously tackles social issues. Mobility. Healthcare. And more. And offers human centered, exciting solutions for everyone to enjoy the benefit of innovation. We digitize it into a contemporary font. Tech for performance. My leg can rotate at full 360. This is tech for good. Join me for stories of incredible people and the amazing technologies allowing them to achieve the impossible. I could walk alone as a blind person. Tech for good. This weekend on CNN. In association with Samsung. Coronavirus. To get daily news updates in your inbox, sign up for the CNN newsletter. Coronavirus. Fact versus fiction. We are back on the road on CNN Business Traveler. About to board. BA863, Prague to London. And getting to see this new way of boarding from the back in action. The flight is almost full, and it's quickly clear the challenges of boarding a large number of people with hand luggage. The main concern, of course, is the close quarters that you're in during the flight. Some airlines are keeping the middle seat empty. The aircraft manufacturers and other airlines say that's not necessary because of the way the air is filtered in the aircraft. So, let's understand this air circulation. The air comes into the aircraft from up here. It then sinks down and is designed to be pulled out of the aircraft down here. 
Once it's been sucked out, it goes through the HEPA air filters, the same that they use in operating theatres. And finally, the air is completely changed every three minutes. The question of the hour, window, middle or aisle seat, which is COVID most friendly? If you are in the window seat, what, what you're going to do is you're going to have less sort of exposure to people who are then walking up and down the aisle. Typically, a close contact is defined as, you know, several minutes, 10 minutes or even 15 minutes. The personal protection sanitary kit is now being given out by all major airlines. The PA one... <laughs> an antibacterial towel and hand sanitizing gel. has also been drastically curtailed. The critics say it's a cost-cutting measure. The airlines counter by saying it reduces the number of contacts between passengers and crew. It's a COVID measure. I have the chicken Caesar. Very good, sir. Thank you. British Airways offers a modified food service in business class, even on short flights, like this one from Prague to London. Times, but very tasty. Everything here is quickly prepared and then disposed of. There's nothing to risk contamination or infection. Traveling was not easy to begin with. Packing, dealing with busy airports, dragging suitcases everywhere. Oh, 지금 시작이 끝났습니다. 건조기 돌려놓고. To see aviation making progress, even if it's small steps to begin with. For so many years, Prague has been one of many European destinations suffering from over tourism. Now the problem is far fewer tourists, oh. and that's causing great economic hardship. Thomas Prosa is the president of the Confederation of Commerce and Tourism in the Czech Republic. He believes the city must grasp this opportunity to change Prague tourism for the better. In Business Traveller, over the years, we've looked at all the different methods. How do you stop business, more people coming here once it reopens? I think what we need to be clear about is not about numbers, it's a type of people who come. And then one of the main stories they share about Prague, it's easy to get drunk, it's cheap, 
and easy to get drunk with no consequences. Uh, return of tourism, such as it is, is primarily domestic tourism, isn't it? Most of what we see is domestic. Foreigners are at maybe three to five percent of traditional capacity. I hesitate to use the word opportunity because so many people have died and there's so much suffering. But on the basis that you don't waste the crisis, is this an opportunity for Prague to change itself? It's very much a great opportunity, and we need that courage. Uh, many businesses realize that uh, them turning their back uh, to local citizens was a mistake. Uh, because now, the locals are the only ones who can save them, but they have a, a memory. You know, if you didn't care about a check coming into Egypt in a restaurant a year ago, they won't come to Egypt in two days. So we hope that at least some of the money this year would stay in the Czech Republic. Uh, of course, uh, still it will be only about 50% of what the foreigners bring, uh, but it would be at least something. You're still going to have the pressure of tourism coming here. So I'm wondering, do you do things like restricting the numbers? Do you do a visa system? You're familiar with all the different mechanisms. Which one appeals to you most, or none of them? Now, what appeals to me is to make sure uh, we have a different kind of tourist. Now, if you got a family, A, they spend more, there's a chance that they come back in five years, and that's what I want. School is back in session. Good morning, everybody. Take a trip to Sesame Street with CNN. Let's get it! Dr. Sanjay Gupta and Erica Hill meet up with Big Bird and the Sesame Street crew to answer all your questions on health and safety in school and making the digital classroom work for everyone, including parents. Bye-bye! The ABCs of Back to School, a CNN Sesame Street Town Hall for Families. Tonight on CNN. national security questions. Living and working in the U.S. right now gives me an important perspective as an outsider looking in. I'm Robin Kono in Atlanta, and this is CNN. In the efforts of attracting visitors and making them feel safe, airports and airlines are doing their part and hotels too have made major changes when you think about it the hotel is amongst the most interesting hada, hada. travel experience After all, it's where you lay your head at night <laughs> all hotel visits usually start in reception and the idea is to make it as contactless as possible for instance making sure people are two meters apart from each other by checking. Ultimately though, what you really want is to have almost no contact at all, except when you have to hand over the obligatory passport. In an ideal world, you've checked in online, you've paid, you've done all of that, and it's all ready to go. All you need is the handover of the key. Before my trip, I spoke to Dr. Sanjay Gupta about what worries him in most hotel rooms. There's been some recent studies that show that uh, the, the virus can become suspended on dust particles. And that's essentially what they mean by aerosolization. So there's respiratory droplets where the virus is in droplets that actually come from your mouth to your nose. And then in certain cases, it can actually attach itself to dust. Would you ask for a room that, that has been cleaned at least 12 hours previous or even the day before? 
that would be ideal. If they could do a great disinfectant and the room has not been occupied in, uh, in uh, 12 to 24 hours or so, I think I would feel very comfortable with the surfaces in there. Surfaces, less of a risk. Uh, that, that low in occupancy, I think, it mitigates the risk even more. remove your mask. Now your safety relies on a whole series of measures. Some you can see, and many you can't. Surfaces are shining, and I can't see any dust. They've removed all those bits and pieces, like flyers, magazines, pens and menus. Even the mini bar is empty. No one pretends that any of this is easy. The goal is to reassure guests that they are safe in their bedrooms. At the moment, of course, with so few people traveling, it's not that difficult for the hotels to actually implement these procedures. Once the recovery really gets underway, they will continue to offer it because the priority has to be ensuring we feel safe in our hotel rooms. I didn't come to Prague to sit in my hotel room, however clean and sanitized it may be. Like everyone else, I've been trapped at home for way too long. It's time to explore Prague, this most magnificent of cities. This is what traveling's all about. Wow, so actually, we are not a mask. I'm not going to see. 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 Two weeks of quarantine in London. I'm not going to see. 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 Or do I stand my ground? I call Catherine Sanderson, the chair of psychology at Amherst College. Here I am. I'm in Prague. If nobody's wearing masks. I've been told I should wear masks. The COVID risk is low. I'm feeling peer pressure. What do I do? Peer pressure is a totally normal thing. It affects all of us. And what you have to remember is that you're actually doing the right thing. You're doing what your recommendations say you should do. I feel odd. People are looking at me. What you have to remember is there may be other people who are thinking exactly as you're thinking. And they might be thinking, gosh, I wish I had the courage to wear a mask. I know it's the right thing to do, but I'm too worried about what people will think or feel. Everyone thinks that everyone else is watching them. On this question of how long it takes for something to become normalized, I know you've been writing quite a bit about this and thinking a lot about it. Research has shown that lots of changes in our lifetime, we've seen dramatic shifts. You no longer can buy a seat on an airplane that's smoking or non-smoking. Most people understand that it's important to wear seatbelts. Those are all examples of how social norms in our lifetime have changed dramatically for the better. Your advice to me is very well taken. I'm going to do what I know to be right. Catherine, thank you so much. Wearing a mask is like wearing a seatbelt in a car. It simply makes sense in these difficult times. And if we are going to travel safely, then masks are essential. Finally, I am socially distanced. And that's it in Business Traveler for this month. I'm Richard Quest. Wherever your travels may take you, I hope they're profitable. And I'll see you next month. Now, do you need a mask? Corruption. 
religion is not something to be tolerated. It's not only African disease. No country is immune. Let's destroy this war. In 2020, the fifth ACE Award encourages the heroes who are fighting against corruption. This helps our communities to save the resources that we need in order to address the burning problems that affect us all. Shine a light on your anti-corruption hero. Nominate now. Friday, Joe Biden, a CNN Democratic presidential town hall, live from Pennsylvania. The American people deserve to have it straight from the show. Anderson Cooper moderates, Friday on CNN. People get their news from CNN than any other news source. Out of control, widespread and destructive wildfires from Oregon to California in oh. neighborhoods already wiped out. New worries about a resurgence of coronavirus cases in the UK were alive in London and desperate and angry migrants with nowhere to call home while they're protesting against the rebuilding of a new shelter. Hello and welcome to CNN Newsroom. I'm Paul Newman. At least 26 people have been killed by the unprecedented wildfires raging across the western United States at this hour and throughout the last few weeks. And Oregon is now bracing for what one official calls a mass fatality incident. Now some communities there have already been burned to the ground and the governor says dozens of people are still missing. Now most of the fatalities so far have been in California. Many of the fires there were sparked by lightning last month. The California governor is calling it a climate change emergency. 24분에 근데 스코트하겠습니다나머지가나무자는스코트지에스코트지에스코트지에스코트지에스코트지에스코트지에스코트지에스코트지에스코트지에스코트지에스코트지에스코트지에스코트지에스코트지에스코트지에스코트지에스코트
In California, infamous for its infernos, five of the largest fires ever recorded in the state are burning now. Firefighters are battling California's biggest blaze in history in the northern part of the state. None of these big fires are close to containment just a week after record temperatures reached 121 degrees in Los Angeles. This is a climate damn emergency. This is real. Governor Gavin Newsom is declaring he is done debating deniers of climate science. When you have temperatures, record-breaking temperatures, record droughts, and you've got something else at play. What we're experiencing right here is coming to community all across the United States unless we disabuse ourselves of all the BS that's being spewed by a very small group of people. Newsom says firefighters from as far away as Canada and Israel are on the way to help. This canyon has not burned in recorded history. So it is a powder cake. One Northern California fire has already claimed at least 10 lives this week. More than a dozen are unaccounted for. We watch these trees right there beside us go up and then embers flying across the lake. At this Butte County shelter, Denise Hendrickson says she jumped into a lake to survive. Eight of us had to go down to the end of our road, go into the sand and get down in the water to avoid the fire. Statewide, the fires are burning a thousand acres every 30 seconds turning day into night this week in San Francisco. In Oregon, destroyed neighborhoods are stained pink with fire retardant, while some 10% of the population is evacuating. We came here a year ago after leaving the Paradise Fire. <laughs> Lost everything then, so there's not much to lose now, I guess, for us. But God, this is terrible. Contrasting satellite images show entire communities in the city of Phoenix, Oregon, now reduced to little more than ash. In Washington State, more acres have been burned in the last three days than in all of last year. I've never seen any winds like this in my life in your long time. The entire town of Mulvey is now gone. This is very devastating to our town. We have no chance. In California, in many places, it's been raining ash for more than a week. And to give you some idea just how much acreage is actually burning, it is double the size the state of Delaware. That is what is on fire here in the state of California. Sarah Seidner, CNN, Monrovia. Oh, my gosh. John Sykes lives in Berry Creek, California, and evacuated his home as the fire moved in. He joins me now on the phone where he's been evacuated to Sparks, Nevada. John, I've got this, you know, picture in my head of you guys getting out in the nick of time, jumping into your car, but then looking in the rearview mirror and seeing everything gone. Is, is that how quickly this happened? Yeah, it was pretty quick, and I was concentrating on getting my wife and my uh, this woman I'm caretaking out of there in safety, and I just had a chance to look in the rearview mirror, and I could see it all burn. All burn, everything, gone. Yeah, gone. What is left of your home in Berry Creek? Nothing's left in my home. I built a little jewelry shop for my wife that appears to be intact. And how, I mean, how do you actually try and take in all that has happened? From what we can understand, the town has been incinerated. Yes, yeah, the town is gone, and um, I don't know that I fully take it in. And, um, it's all material possessions. I'm healthy. I have my wife and the woman I was caring for, and that's what counts. Do you hope to go back and rebuild? No, ma'am. I don't want to see it again. Really? You just never want to go back to your town I, in California? My wife wants to go dig through the debris for mementos of 50 years life there, but no, I never want to see it. Why not? It's just too heartbreaking for me. That's where I raised my children. I've been there a long time. That was my whole life, okay? Certainly can hear the pain in your voice, John, and uh, so sorry for everything you've been through and obviously a long road ahead. You know, you said it best off the top. Uh, you're alive. Everyone who's with you is safe. Uh, and we hope we can take some solace uh, in that for what we're looking at now is complete devastation. John, thanks so much. Appreciate your time.
Yeah, you can just hear the pain in his voice there, can't you? It's so heartbreaking and more to come. I spoke with uh, Doug Graff, he's in Salem, Oregon. I he's know those things. Chief of Fire Protection at the Oregon Department of Fire. Today, I'm going to talk to you about it. Today, I'm going to talk to you about it. Today, I'm going to talk to you about it. 턱걸이랑 스커트 이렇게 할 거예요. 그다음에 이쪽 어깨 운동을 밴드를 이용해서 할 거예요. 또 틈틈이 틈틈이. 아 일단 오늘은 여기까지만 할게요. 배도 그냥 아좀 힘이 없네.